Good evening and welcome to Business Hub, your one-stop business market where we bridge the gap between business owners and their target market. My name is Omobolanli Adishui and uh, this evening on Business Hub, we're going to be going into the fashion world. But uh, this time around, it is uh, in the Buy Nigeria uh, system and I have uh, someone who is doing fantastically well in that uh, particular sector. Her name is Anima Shaundirayo. Good evening, Anima yeah. Good evening. I can call you Derayo, right? Yes, please. please okay, please. so who is Derayo? Um, Derayo, um, actually, if you start from my name, that's a brand name as well. Uh, but Derayo is from Aderayo, okay. which means Queen's Miss Joy. So mm. um, the brand name is Derayo, mm. D E apostrophe R A Y O. Okay. Yeah. So what uh, inspired you to go into the fashion business? Um, yes. Um, Actually, I was I got tired of seeing a whole lot of imported goods around. Ah. I, I just got tired, so I was like, "What can we do to actually um, be different in the market? What mm. can we do um, to ensure that um, something that is made for us, that is produced here locally, that we can sell instead of all just bringing in everything? Mm. We can't create something, and it's just funny the way Nigerians. Um, a lot of people still feel that this machine that is just producing all these things, mm. not actually women, but human beings working. Mm. You actually so, look different mm. because uh, the typical uh, Nigerian woman may not be wearing Ankara shoes. I know the narrative is gradually changing but looking at you have a uh, headgear that's the Ankara Gili and then you have Ankara shoes on. Uh, do you make things like this? Uh, yes, that's what we do. Uh, we're into production of shoes, mm. bags and accessories um, made with best of um, quality fabrics mm. and original leather. Um, why fabrics? Because mm. um, we feel that um, we all have a lot of leather out there and I think most times when I have a uh, product on and I'm going on the road, when people see it, they'll be like, oh, that's, if I, they don't notice it on time. And they feel that if you tell them that, oh, I'm, it's made by me, it's made in Nigeria, they'll be like, ah, no, it's not possible now. Mm. Like, they don't believe it actually. But when we use fabric, that is something that is um, known to us and they see it and they see the edge, they don't know, oh, wow. This is different and this is mm. actually made here. And but so what do you it. think are the challenges though? You see a lot of Nigerians would rather go for uh, the imported brands even though uh, the imported brands may not be as of good quality as that of uh, the Nigerian brand. What, what, what do you think is responsible for this? Um, I uh, I think it um, went back over the years. Uh, mm. where, while we're growing up, I think everybody's just used to um, mm. uh, wearing imported shoes, imported clothes. Um, so we feel that it can continue that way uh, since we have the we have the resources around, mm. and we feel that if what can we do to actually contribute to the GDP of Nigeria mm. as well? We need to promote even made in Nigeria. Most of our product, once you see it, you see made in Nigeria on it for mm. them to actually know that it's something beautiful and mm. something great is actually coming from Nigeria. Um, so that is um, why there are, lot, there are a lot of challenges actually. Mm. Um, it's just that you know when you have passion for something and when you know that this is what you stand for and you're trying to give value. Mm. Or whatever the challenges that you're facing, you just have to face it from those challenges that you have a success story. So like starting it. a Made in Nigeria brand, what are the challenges? You just mentioned that there are a lot of challenges. Can you tell us about some of the um, challenges? Yes, uh, there's a, a whole lot of them. Um, when it starts to, you know, we have, uh, when it comes to the young ones actually, mm. uh, they'll be like, okay, fine, I don't have capital and the likes. Um, but I feel that once your those ones are still a minor sort of because mm. you can raise fund your mm. personal savings or just that anyhow you can. Mm. Um, when it comes to uh, electricity, we are having epilepsy. Electricity mm. is not stable, and when it comes to even some of the materials that we use, though some of the materials are sourced here, but mm. even they still we still have a whole lot of them that is being imported in. Mm. Uh, so those are the kind of challenges that we deal with, and for the fact that a lot of Nigerians we still need to. Um, trying to um, sensitize them about made in Nigeria that this is made here and is of quality and um, it's something that is different from the usual ones. Mm. So it's changing now. A lot of people, trust me, a lot of people buy made in Nigeria products. Mm. So we can, at least over the years, we've tried. And you know the federal government has also been pushing yes, for yes, people to trying. patronize made in Nigeria goods. Yes, but trying. do you think they are doing enough? Because recently we heard about the uh, budgeted money for cars for the lawmakers. <laughs> Imported cars. Okay, okay. 
Um, when it comes to um, the uh, when it comes to our government, the leadership, uh, there's a lot going on. Which, if I want to really talk about it and that, we won't. It's a story for another day. Mm. I feel um, we are in Nigeria. We are here. It's a community. Uh, whatever you feel that you can do in your own way, in your own mm. sector, in your own industry, to just make Nigeria better, mm. uh, make your stand. Um, either that is quality product or because if we keep analyzing what the government is doing and what is going on around we just will end up not achieving anything mm. in the country mm. now looking at uh, the environment nigeria the typical nigeria environment do you think uh, there's uh, encouragement do you think the environment is enabling for people like you who want to do made in nigeria products um I, you know, when I started, I think I, I talked about having passion. Mm. Once you have, um, Nigeria is a tough environment for any business, actually. Though, when I look at it, there's a lot of foreigners that are coming in and they are making it work. Mm. So, we just need to find a way to make it work instead of even trying to, is it that you're leaving the country, even if you're leaving the country, it's not Which just Which a lot of people do. It's not just easy to do and set up like mm. that because of your license and all the taxes, which you still pay more taxes than being in Nigeria. Mm. So, we just have to quit the excuses and just face those challenges and make it work. Mm. There are a lot of foreigners that they are, a lot of them are coming in now and they are doing things, they are producing and you just end up, you'll be like, why, how are they doing it? Um, mm. Still running on all this for all these lies that we're complaining about mm. and they're succeeding in what they're doing. So we just need to find a way, um, ensure that we are of use passion because once you use passion, you do what you love doing. Mm. So that when the headaches come, you'll be able to absorb it and move forward. But how do you deal with the challenge of having to import some raw materials from outside the country? Because that's some form of also importation. Um, yes, um, which m some of them are still on the high side, um, which we're hoping that even um, some some people, that's what we're, we're trying to do. Mm. We're trying to even clamor for. Uh, not everybody going into back production, mm. shoe production, dress, um, clothes production. Some people should even look at uh, maybe making of buttons, the raw materials that we use. Mm. What can you do in a small capacity and just make it cheap for people to buy. And just everybody should go in that sector. But because we need we need to talk about it, we need more orientation. We need government to come in. Mm. If, it, it might be in the form of training. Send some people out for training to learn more about all these materials that we do and find a way that they can just set up. The value mm. chain is, um, is is big and we have a whole lot of money that this can be made, which mm. we know that the rate of unemployment is high in Nigeria. We, if some people are actually doing that, so it's going to find a way to balance it. Mm. And uh, talking about the rate of unemployment in Nigeria, do you see the average Nigerian youth? We know that uh, there have been talks from some sectors that the average Nigerian youth is a bit lazy. Do you agree with that statement or do you see the average Nigerian youth striving to make ends meet? Um, I'll start with Nigerians are very talented people. We are very hardworking. Um, but the way, the way, the way things, um, I think the way we grew up, the system mm. actually um, did not leave room for some people to actually try their skill. Okay. What, what can they do apart from the academia? Mm. So I think we all, I think th that is the tally, the, the, what they are releasing in school and there's no job. Mm. So actually at the end of the day, they are placing too much priority on, oh, once I finish from school, I'll get a white collar job. Mm. Which, uh, over the years, there's no white collar job. So mm. there was a gap, which, you know, when they are, they are held and they don't have anything to do, find, they'll just find a way to just do something. Mm. So those are the, I can't say we are lazy. Well, I have a lot of Nigerians that are striving some of them lack of information is affecting them mm. some of them because they don't even know what to do mm. they don't, some people some people cannot even decide oh this is what i want to go for mm. and which started from our the our um uh, academic um 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 back i think their background uh, in school we don't there's no um teaching of skill mm. trying to let them know that there's some profession that so what has changed because in those days it used to be that the average nigerian youth would just wait after school to get a white collar job but now you see a see, lot of them we can see going entrepreneurial we, we, we can see yes because they feel that oh after the nyc there's no job oh what can i do so they'll just okay yeah, i saw um that the lady that is doing this and is being successful okay let me try my hands so everybody's mm. still trying to struggle and make something for themselves so which at the end of the day you see them doing this doing that not even what they are made 
to do but if we can start from the primary level to secondary level and enlighten them on oh these are the kind of profession this is introduce it to them and let them feel it and let them see oh i love this i could become someone like this i could try this when i grow up or mm. i could um, venture into this business all right let's take a break we'll be back to talk about the place of training and all of this okay. all right there's still business hub on impact africa television iatv we'll take a short break and then we'll be back please stay with us Welcome back. You're still tuned to Impact Africa Television and we're discussing fashion, especially the buy made in Nigeria uh, business world right here on uh, Business Hub. And I have uh, Adira Yo and Imashan right here with me. And we were about to talk about the training aspect. Uh, I read that you actually started your first business at the age of 18. Tell us how it was. Um, yes, um, it was, I think back then it was more for Survivor. It was just like when you actually want to get some something doing for you to survive uh, in school. So I started um, business. Though I registered. What did you study? Entrepreneur and business management. Okay. And I studied marketing as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Um. So it was just to do something and do something different and trying to make money. But um, in the long run, I realized that it's just more than the money. It's about giving value. It's about um, adding to the um, community. But an 18-year-old girl, how were you able to convince people to let them understand that you knew you're tough? Uh, I think uh, it was um, a gradual thing. I didn't arrive at that um, straight up. I think I started, I was a bit selling some stuff at the age of 16, 17. Uh, so I was trying to learn, I was learning on the job, like learning how to deal with customers, with clients and talk with them and um, interact. But I was actually studying marketing, so I was trying mm. to practice what I was studying. Mm. So, and it was fun for me because I just, I, I, I think I love making money. So it was, <laughs> it was um, so it, I, I was learning at the same time mm. while trying Give to... Giving back. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, what would you say is a place of training in entrepreneurship? Because we see a lot of entrepreneurs who just think, uh, well, everybody is doing this. Let me go into it without trying to see what are the trainings, what are the upgrades that I need to go for so that I can move with the trends. Yes. Um, th thanks to the environment, the business environment now, the entrepreneurship, um, there's a lot of training that is going on. There are a lot of free trainings, even apart from the paid ones. Mm. Um, training is very, very important. It's very key. Did you go for any training? Uh, yes, I've, I've gone for a, a lot. I can't even count for mm. counting, but I think I've done, um, I've been to Lagos Business School, EDC, okay. um, for a full training on business management. I mm. studied entrepreneurial business management mm. as a course for four years. And I'm pr I've been practicing so you're, over you're the an years. embodiment of business <laughs> because <laughs> business, marketing, entrepreneurship, you yeah, did everything yes yes um um so um for an entrepreneur if you want to start you need to number one know um, um your passion what you, do you really want to do mm. what problem is how that i really want to solve mm. once you know the problem it will be easier for you to assess um, any other thing then information is important you need mm. to um, either solve online online is very easy if, even if you don't have the money to at least get some and there's a lot of free trainings you need to know what's going on what's the latest um maybe uh, update uh, when it comes to your own profession mm. you need to um then know how to even the business aspect of each profession of each mm. industry and so th there's a business aspect which you have to study which you have to study mm. yes yes so when how come we fashion, don't have it, it goes beyond you sewing mm. it goes beyond you um uh, doing production making bags and shoes it goes beyond that this mm. business aspect how do you manage your staff the human resources how do you um um, um uh, put some other implementation strategies which is actually lacking in a lot of businesses a because a lot of you them. see some yes. people they don't even know how to manage their customers they don't know how to satisfy or even of course you can't satisfy every customer mm -hmm. but when the customer expresses this taste how to even come down how to the do you how do you manage yes, that kind those of are the customer. things that they need to do that it courses that you need to take there are a lot of um, um courses online that you can take watch some free videos just to like even if at all you can't have money to pay for those paid trainings mm. so it's very important you need to study it uh, the accounting the books are there which you need to know um knowing the legal aspect of the business as well those mm. are the things that you need to study mm. okay so uh, what would you say has been the high point for you uh, in this business uh, <laughs> uh, at this point, I wouldn't say uh, uh, we've gotten to the high point. Okay. Um, but the, for the fact that um, we've produced a whole lot of num a whole of in over 
let me say ho- over 100,000 pro- goods mm. that have been worn all, o- all over the world and we don't even know some of our majority of our customers we don't know that we mm. produce they hold that online then we deliver it and means that a lot of nigerians are patronizing made in nigeria goods um yes but the, for our own products we have more of um um the that di- people in diaspora Oh, we have. I think we have. They are eighty percent of our customers. So even our own citizens are now buying. No, they have actually buying it, but uh, most of them. When it, we know we are making Ankara shoes, mm. Ankara bags, mm. they feel like most times we're still sensitizing them to let them know that you can have or wear your um um uh, plain dress and have your Ankara shoe and have your Ankara bag, mm. and which will last the same way mm. that your normal shoe will last. Mm. So mis- most of them still feel like, oh, it might get dirty because of the environment. Mm. Um, they feel like, oh, how do I combine? So we're still at that stage mm. so we're growing and we're bringing more people into the industry so you know time. one one challenge I, I still spoke with someone yesterday as regards why nigerians do not patronize be made in nigeria goods and the person said that this uh, most of this nigerian goods when you want to get an equal quality as uh, which is in the same level with that uh, imported good mm. it might be more expensive than the one you would get from say china or other countries okay. how can we deal with this issue um though when it comes to um buying brands brands are they have different grades mm. so i wouldn't say the imported as ch- they are cheap I, w- I wouldn't say that i wouldn't say they are not cheap as well mm. but when it comes to made in nigeria we shouldn't have that mentality that it must be cheap no because there's a lot of factor that is going into it there are some that are affordable depending mm. on that kind of brand who are their target markets mm. um if, so when you're buying from the brand you need to study are they luxury brand or are they um the normal ordinary brand that they are um, servicing the normal people mm. so if it depends on the brand that you're w- w- um, buying from i know some affordable brands of three thousand four thousand mm. ten thousand fifteen twenty mm. Which and they are of is your brand well. affordable? Yes, it is affordable because mm. we we want uh, we want it to be an household uh, name and we want it to stand is a representative of like this is great. This is coming from Nigeria. Mm. This is something that is unique and we're making it work against all odds. So, what do you think can be done to ensure that a lot of Nigerians? Because if you check out some workplaces, you cannot wear uh, an Ankara shirt or an Ankara top to work. For instance, in banking companies, even in the media, so when you're working on a TV station like this, you kind of wear, uh, and we're talking about promoting made in Nigeria brands. Uh, what can be th- done? There are, there are actually some, not all the Ankara bags. Um, there are some that we, we do leather bags as well. I'm talking about leather tops, shoes. dresses. And for tops, now we, I think we have um, even some of the corporate offices that they are infusing a bit of African print on their um corporate way at mm. the office yes mm. they just like come up with the concept that we can buy and our staff will just wear it and use it might just be a, a so you do that for print. some companies yes it might just be a little bit of the print on that particular um product so uh, even some bags it might just be a lot it might just be a little bit detailing it might mm. even be inside the bags like you might not even know that it's an Ankara, but mm. you know what you see you know <laughs> that there's something just different about it there's something this is made and it's made here and for us okay so how many if you are going to rate the percentage of meat in Nigeria brands in Nigeria, how would you rate it? If I want to rate compared it, to yeah. the imported brands, uh, <laughs> um, we're trying, we're moving, um, we're doing our best with the with what we have on ground, and it's, it's not bad. There are some. I'm that talking in terms of quality now. That's what I'm saying. Mm. There are some that you can't even tell that they are made in Nigeria. Mm. There are some. There's some of our products. If you see them, you'll be like, oh, wow, are you are you really... It's when they see the prints and they see the logo, they'll be like, oh, this is actually made here. Um, we feel, we know that with time, with years, we'll upgrade on the quality and we'll upgrade when we have access to more funds, access to mm. more machines and all, we'll be able to upgrade because it's not a day journey. You keep upgrading as time goes And by. is it lucrative considering the fact that you still have to break into the market? You have to let people see reasons to patronize you. Is it it's, lucrative? It's, it's very lucrative. It's, um, <laughs> when it even comes to fashion industry at large, uh, when it comes to crafts, when it comes to bag making, shoe making and accessory, it uh, is a huge is a huge um, industry and it's um, there's a whole lot of money being made in it and even while you're starting these small ones even while uh, you're starting you see that you make a bit from it there's, mm. there's, it's very lucrative mm. okay so um, in terms of 
starting the business? What does it take to start a made in Nigeria business? What is that? It's actually um, making the decision that this is what you really want to do and knowing that there's actually a solution out there, a problem out there that you want to solve. And creating that solution, that is what entrepreneurship is all there's about. Is it capital intensive or can you start small? Uh, you can start small. You can start small. Uh, but considering the fact that the raw materials have to be imported, no, how even, do you start even small? While, when you're starting small, you can get can get your customers first by mm. doing a prototype of your product okay. and show them, like, oh, this is what I... If they liked it, from there they order, then from there you deliver do your good so you don't necessarily have to have a whole lot of money for materials on ground so yeah. you might from the orders that are coming in then you get the materials ensure that you do the quality the, the well packaged one that is branded then deliver then from there from one customer to 10 mm. to 20 referrals if your product is good to 100 then that's it so what's your advice to every youth out there who is still wondering how to break through in terms of financial strength um, um, my advice would be to, um, you have to look inwards, um, when you're starting a business, you don't need a loan or you need, if you can get a grant, that's fine. And if you can just get, we start with what you have, mm. anyhow you can start. Don't wait till you have a whole lot of money till you start. Mm. Just make that decision and you'll be fine. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Anima Shaundirayo. Thank you so much for coming on Business Hub today. I've been speaking with a textile designer, Adirayo Anima Shaun, and she has been doing a whole lot in the fashion world. And uh, we'll peg it there on today's edition of Business Hub. My name is Omobolanli Adishu. Remember that you can watch a repeat of this program on YouTube at IATV Africa. I uh, would say goodbye here. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye.